Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We hope this past week has been productive, happy, healthy, yes. and fun for everyone. It was a momentous week for the country and hopefully it is uh, the reset we all need. Things maybe will start moving in a good direction now, huh? Yes. Okay, serial number one is sold out, uh, but we are reprinting it this week. So we should have it on our website in about a week and it will be in stores in about three weeks. Can you tell the difference between the first printing and the second printing? Well, I can. <laughs> What's the difference? <laughs> the second printing, the title is in black. Okay. Instead of red. So that's how you can tell the difference. You'll um, know it on site. Yeah. But thank you all so much for your amazing support. We are kind of out here on an island, not knowing really what everybody's doing out there. So we really appreciate your support. Yeah. Uh, it, you. it means a lot to us. Anyway, so issue number two will be going to the printer next Monday and should be in stores on February 24th. So Terry's working fast and furious to get that finished up and to yeah. the printer as well. Um, also, yeah. just a reminder about Terry Moore Live on April 9th and 10th. Mm. Is that right? I think so. Yes. <laughs> uh, lots of sketches, original art, live panels, and sales will uh, be going on, so keep that in mind. We'll also be doing Studio Sunday Live on Sunday the 11th uh, at 11 o'clock Central Time. So we're looking forward to talking to everyone. We really miss seeing everyone at the conventions. You know, one of the things I noticed about big sales on TV is that they offer 70-month financing. Are we going to offer that? Yes, for sure. 70-month free financing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interest-free. Yeah, count on that. Okay, just like your Chevy. <laughs> The answer to that is no. <laughs> okay, so tomorrow is we have a big warehouse move. Yeah. I think it's going to be pretty easy because it's really just a bunch of boxes. Everything's boxed and just boxes and shelving. So I, I mean, think it's it'll be pretty be hard easy. because it's a lot of boxes. They assure me it's only going to be a, the movers assure me it's only going to be a few hours. Mm -hmm. So I think it'll go fast and easy. I really like change, so this is exciting for me. For Terry, not so much. <laughs> if it works, but no, we do need this change. And the warehouse is closer, so that's gonna be fun for us. Well, I wouldn't say fun, but easier. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun not to have to go through all the traffic. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So really, that's all I have today, Mr. Moore. Are okay. you ready for the hot seat? I am. Okay. Yeah, bring it. When developing characters, do you look back at previous series and draw from what worked and what didn't, or do you have something in mind and go forward with it? I usually have a new character in mind, like a Zoe or, um, you know, Samantha as the Marine, and I just focus on the new character. Okay, so uh, to take that a step further, do you have a favorite character that you've drawn? that you thought, oh, I nailed this one? I usually say it's the character I'm working on right now, which today would be Zoe. You know, Zoe is a very fun character. Um, do I have a favorite out of all of them? That's Sophie's choice, that's hard to choose because each one of them meant something to me at, the, at different times. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Do you have a character you wish you'd never drawn? Is there a character you thought, oh man, this this didn't go well. Yeah, uh, it was going to be Kachu. I was thinking I need to get this character out of the book as fast as possible because she's hard to draw. <laughs> <laughs> Until I figured her out. Um, if I don't know, I don't know if I have an answer on the tip of my tongue. But if there is a character I regret, it's because it's too much like somebody else's character. Oh, okay. Not because I created a stinker like Freddy. Or yeah. any of the yeah. other villains. No, Freddy's a great character. But if there's a character I have that looks too much like some something somebody else that's famous. Wonder Woman or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a mistake. That's wrong. Do not copy other people's characters. Okay. That's the road to nowhere. <laughs> okay. Well, you ready for your second question? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we all know about your famous green pencil. Can you give us an idea of what other supplies you can't live without? Um, I am really attached to my, what I put my ink into. I've had it forever, the, since day one. Since day one, I've had my little compass kit. 
uh, this guy and this pencil have gotten me through. This is where all the circles come from. <laughs> so yeah, you recognize that. What about that little plastic thing with the, all the little holes in it? My lettering guide. I've used the exact same lettering guide for my whole career. I have a backup brand new. I bought it 25 years ago. I've never used it because <laughs> this guy won't break. Um, let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, one other thing. Um, my little knife. What do you do with that? I use this all the time for um, scraping gum off or scraping a little bit of ink off the page if I don't want to use white out, things like that. Where, where is their gum? Um, when you pull these out of the pad, oh, okay. the glue on the side can sometimes come with the top. Okay. And uh, you can scrape it off a little bit and pull it off. So this is my... You've it's lost a short. lot of those knives, though, haven't you? I've given a lot of them up to airport security, right. but they were all newer, you know, like little Swiss Army knives or something. Uh -huh. This one stays. That I, one never leaves the studio. No, this I don't want to lose it. And it's, it's a cheap knife. It's no big deal. I just attach to it. But when it comes to things like brushes, you you know, you use them until they're no good, and then you I've gone through a ton of brushes. So I can't get attached to a brush even though I use them all the time. So that's it. Okay. So it's the green pencil, the circle maker, the lettering maker. So have you ever done a tutorial on that lettering guide? I did. Yeah. And I tried really hard to show you how I use this. It's, it, looks, it looks ridiculously complex, but it's not. It just depends on where you turn the wheel and then you just kind of work your pencil down the row. Well, I remember for years you couldn't figure it out. Yeah, for probably the first 75 years I couldn't figure it out because it looked like physics to me. Um, but one day I just read the guide and the guide didn't say what I wanted it to, but I got a, an idea of how to make it do what I want to do, or how the cartoonist used it. Why did I pursue this? Because all the old school cartoonists used one. Um, if, if you're going to make those all those blue line rules on paper, um, this is how they did it. Like this is how they made your old Superman comics. And I wanted to work the same way on pencil with lettering on page as somebody from 1965. But, but if you're, but don't most people do their lettering now on the computer? Mm. So they don't need that guy. Nah. Oh. Nobody needs this. That's a piece of crap. I, I, I can't throw it away. <laughs> it, it just won't leave me. You're one of the few people that still letters on the page. You know who else Frank letters on the page? Yeah. Frank Cho. The master. You and Frank. The master. I bet he's got one of those. Um, I can't think of anybody else offhand. The other people I know of that might letter on page, like Paige Braddock, they, I don't know if they use a lettering guide. So, but I've seen Frank use a lettering guide on oh, his yeah. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. The master. <laughs> okay. Well, you have anything else, Mr. Moore? No. No, that's it. I I need to put all my precious, little precious things back where I found them. Yes, you do. And he rummages through that drawer looking for them all the time. Mm -hmm. so. I only have four things and I lose them. <laughs> okay, so what are you drawing today? Uh, today I'm going to draw um, from this sketch that I have here. Don't look at it too long. I'm going to expand that into a full-blown nice sketch. I'm going to show you how to do that. From rough to nice. From rough to nice, we're going to draw this uh, Francine sketch. Okay. And it looks like she's in a bathing suit to me. I don't know if that's going to work. We'll see. Okay. Well, you guys have a great week. Meet Terry back here in a minute, and we'll see you next week. All right. Meet you right here. Uh, okay. So now I am I'm going to try to put this over here. And what I see here is, again, the pendulum. The body goes this way. It's a cut in half about there. And then from below is the hips. And the shoulder is back behind the chest. And chest up. The, you know, the middle of the waist to the elbow goes there. So that's where, how far the elbow goes. And then there's an arm coming at us. Uh-oh, perspective. And then a hand coming at us, more perspective. If it was going straight, it would have gone straight down to about right there. But nope, it decided to come up, which is harder to draw. Thank you very much. Um, collarbone 
will be in front of that neck. It may even show because of the angle that we're at. Chin here, um, belly button, start top of the legs, right in there. And okay, what is holding this poor person up? Because um, this is a precarious angle to be standing at. We all know that. So you get into about here, and it's going to be the back leg. The back leg is the one holding this body up. And the front leg is the one in motion. So the back leg is going to go like that. And the minute you put that line there, it suddenly looks like a model, a modeling pose or something, doesn't it? Okay, I just want to point that out. Um, it just seems very natural for this to work this way. The leg line, the body line. Look, it's just a line found in nature. That could be anything. That could be the horizon of uh, the beach. Um, that could be the sine wave of, of a noise. You know, I mean, it's just, it's the letter S. Um, this guy here comes in like that. So it's like parallel lines that come in like that. And then there's a singularity right at or about the knees. A singularity is when you get two infinite lines that, and that the point where they cross is the <laughs> magic. Uh, so the, that knee is magic. Um, and then the neck is in the middle of these two. And then the head creates its own angle. And it, one of the reasons why the head and the face at this angle is interesting is because it's not following these, these two uh, lines, infinite lines. It actually kind of got a little bit out of, out of skew and then directly looked at us. Instead of looking down at where all these paths are going, it's, it broke the chain and it's looking up at us. And that's what makes human beings interesting. Okay, that's about as heavy as I can handle on a Sunday morning. Let's just leave it at that. But I guess if you're, if you're so inclined, you could sit here and just make philosophy about all your drawings. Um, but one good thing about art is that it does allow you to spend time thinking about, oh, uh, this, this uh, angle or this line that I'm using right now, I saw it on a brick wall or I saw it on a tree, and now it's, now it's a piece of pottery or something. So um, I'm going to find the work that I will do now will be to get this face in proportion. And I already have the proportions on the body. The body proportions are set. There it is. And now get the face that matches that body proportion. Um, so I think what we'll do here is go to double time so you can watch me work without having to spend 30 minutes watching me work. So roughing in the face, um, it looks like, at this point, it looks like an Iron Man face or how to draw the Marvel Way type face, very generic. Um, what you're, I'm looking for here is just getting, making sure that the features of the face are in the right place and the right proportion. Um, and then I can go in and put the personality of the individual on the eyes, on the nose, on the mouth, but at least they're in the right place just like everything else on this sketch at this point. Um, it's an extremely generic drawing, and you're just looking to make sure everything is in the right place. Like right now, <laughs> I made several modifications on the top half there. And now I'm trying to figure out, how am I going to do this perspective hand holding a can in front? I'm drawing the hand too big, then I drew it a different angle. Still doesn't look very attractive but it may be technically correct, but it doesn't look right. Okay, back up to the top and looking for the proportions. It seemed more natural to have that hand out 
than just to drop down like a model. So again with the top, it's still not right. And I'll just keep going back to it every time I see it. And then I decide the most natural thing this arm can be doing is just hook that thumb into the jeans. So now you have to figure out where is the elbow when you put the arm at that angle. And I have a tendency to make the forearm too long on drawings like this. Um, so I go back and double check that. Okay, so <laughs> as you watched me struggle through all that and trying to find the, the pretty part of this sketch, um, you can see that I was just searching for whatever was natural to this woman, the natural pose, not the one I wanted to inflict and force her into. You know, um, you have to find the natural angle for that arm. Nothing about holding that um, can of drink worked ever. So the most natural thing that people do in this pose is to hook their thumb into their pocket or their pants. So I went with it. Uh, why why uh, try to be against nature? Um, do what you normally see there. And then just kind of a cute Gwen Stacy piece thing and Gwen Stacy hair here, which... <laughs> I, uh, I tend to draw a lot. I just think that's a good hairstyle anyway. Um, but it was also the kind of the Dakota Johnson hairstyle in the high note. So it's very classic uh, to have these uh, bangs. Gene Shrimpton was the, a model that did these bangs as well that kind of feathered down into the hair. And then the hair is this length. Um, there's some names from the past for you. Uh, Gwen Stacy and Gene Shrimpton, the model. Um, Anyway, so uh, you've got uh, the, the center point of uh, weight is here for the head angle, and then uh, there's a center point of weight here and the center point of weight here. They need to kind of, they're, they're hanging over something, so you know that when you get down into the foot, the foot is going to be right in the middle down there, this left foot. So if you had to draw all the way down, down to here, that foot is going to go about right there. And that's what's holding that all that up. And then this foot comes back here as a cantilever. So um, that's how I rough it in. I mean, that's how I go in from scratch and uh, find the natural drawing. Um, and then to polish it, um, what I would do is get into the dark pencil and the mechanical pencil. And you get in here and now that I have all these suggestions, you know, like this body line is somewhere right in there. <laughs> I never say exactly where it is. I have multiple choices, multiple choices, multiple choices. There's uh, two choices there. So the dark pencil is where you come in and you make your choice like an inker. And you you put in the final version of, you know, that hair comes right there. And then everything else around it gets erased. You know, this arm line right here is going to go right like this and then there's an elbow line right here and it's going to go up like that see that's the definitive and not these little light pencil lines but you need to be brave and look for it with your little pencil is the elbow here is it sharp is that line over here is this arm skinny or is it wider you know don't be afraid to work on your page this is your workspace um, so you can see how you could take a drawing like this, get out that heavy line pencil, and you can find the real bold outline. And then that's the one you keep. You erase everything else. That's how I do it, folks. Uh, maybe next week we can polish this, pen this pencil sketch up. If I don't already just, you know, do it between now and then, we'll draw something new next week, but whatever. Whatever you want to do. If you want to watch me polish this, just put it in the comments below and hit like because it certainly helps us uh, keep going. Um, you don't want to make YouTube videos and then just send them out into nowhere and nothing pings back. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a good week and uh, have fun drawing.